Revelation chapter 11. Tonight, our time is getting away from us. We've studied this evening and looked a little bit at this and had some time to go over this. I had an appointment earlier this morning, another one at 3 o'clock this evening, and we've kind of been doing some patty foot around. But, uh, but anyway, as you be we begin to look at this, and we got down to verse number three, and we were talking about the three months, or I mean three and a half years. We just finished that up, and I'm not going to ask you this question because I'm going to get a bunch of different answers and we're going to, not going to take up the time tonight to do this because we're uh, in verse number four. Because a lot of you is going to say Elijah and Elisha or Elijah and Moses or Elijah and Enoch. Am I not right? Now, how many of you are going to say, how many of you would have said Joshua and Zerubbabel? You'd say, Dane, you're stupid. Well, I just want to take the word of God and prove it to you. The Word of God says in verse number four, these are two olive trees. These are two. It doesn't say those were two. So these are two. These are present. These are present now. We're changing gears. Now we're going from second to third, or first to second. And Instead of if you're used to driving a straight geared car. Alright? But so now we're we are we're heading out. The two witnesses are clothed in sackcloth. And but now I want you to slip you can go over into Zechariah. To Zechariah and uh, you're gonna find some things and you're gonna learn some things since I've learned some things, and I'm still learning. And if you want to want to disagree with me, you have the perfect right to do so. But in Zechariah, and in, in chapter number four, I believe it is, and in verse, let's let's just read. Let's just read a little bit. And uh, it might help us just a little. In chapter number four, and the Bible says, and the angel that talked with me. Now, Zechariah doing the talking. All right. Let's read the verse in Revelations. And these are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. Now, that, that, that is just about as plain as the nose on your face, isn't it? Now, God just, just made this just about as plain and clear as it could be. All right. Now, in Zechariah chapter 4, and the Bible said, And the angel that talked with me came again and talked with me as a man that had wakened out of his sleep. 
And he said unto me, What seest thou? Now he's talking to Zechariah. And I said, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick, and all gold, and a bowl about the top of it, seven lamps thereon, seven pipes, to the seven lamps which are upon the top of it. Seven pipes to the seven lamps. Now pipes, if you'll, now if the best I can remember, pipes are hollow. They're empty on the inside. And they feed the lamps. They're feeding the lamps. Okay? And they said, and which are upon the top of it, and the two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl, and the other upon the left side of it. And so I answered, and I spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? And so I answered, and uh, so I answered, and spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, what are these, my Lord? And the angel talked with me and answered and said to me, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then he said and spake to me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto... What is that next word? Zerubbabel. Okay, say it. Not by might, nor by power, but by spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. What art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof, with shouting, crying, grace, grace unto it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it. His hands, and thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. For who hath despise the day of small things, for they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. Remember the pipes. Remember the pipes. And they are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro through the whole earth. Okay, then answered I, and said unto him, What are these? What? Okay, what now, now? Now talk to me, church, tonight. I want you to understand. What are these? What two? Olive trees. Olive trees. Go back to Revelations. These are the two what? How smart is God? How dumb is Dean Adams? <laughs> oh, we got to figure this out, ain't we? Oh, this book will stand for proof and reproof against itself. This book is not wrong. This book is not wrong. Man may be wrong, but this book ain't wrong. God said, it is. What are these two olive trees upon the right side, right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof? They're two olive trees. All right? And I answered again and said unto him, what be these two olive branches, which though they be the two golden, whoa, here we go again, the two pipes. Pipes are hollow. 
There's no life. There's nothing in a pipe. There's nothing in a pipe until you put something in a pipe. A pipe is empty. There's no life. There's nothing to sustain it. There's nothing to bring life into that pipe. Or nothing of there, it's no good. It's a hollow reed. What did God say to them when they uh, were come out of the brush piles and out of the woods and out of everywhere? What did they? What y'all come out here to see? A reed swinging in the wind. And John began to preach the word of God, didn't he? Amen. Don't be afraid to talk to me because you're going to talk to God. You're going to answer about this book one of these days. You're going to answer about what you know about this book to God. Yet they came out of the brush piles and out of everywhere. He said, did you come to here see a reed swinging in the wind? He come preaching, prepare the way of the Lord. You're going to die and you're going to go to hell if you don't get right with God. That's what, uh, that's what John came out of preaching. What did these two olive trees come up out of Jerusalem? What did they come up in the streets of Jerusalem before the whole city? They come out for 42 months, but they come out of preaching the Word of God, didn't they? They wanted them killed. They want them not. They were empty until God filled them. And we're going to see that. They were a pipe. They were empty. You were empty until God filled you. Amen. Are we making sense now? You were dead in trespasses and sins until you were an empty pipe until God put something in into you that was eternally alive. Now, are we making sense yet? We're going to get there, ain't we? Okay. And I answered again and said unto him, What are these two? Verse 12. And Zerubbabel, I mean uh, Zechariah. And he said, All right, verse 13. And he answered the man and said, Knowest thou not, not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. And he said, Then said he, These are the what? Anointed ones. Now, do you believe they're Enoch and Elijah? Do you believe they're Moses and Elijah and all of these other ones? Who did God anoint? to take the children of Israel over Jordan after Moses had died. Who did God anoint to take up the ark, to take up everything that God had given the children of Israel after Moses had died to take up and give Give the children of Israel the anointed one after God buried Moses in Mount Nebo or Mount uh, up in the mountain, Mount Pisgah. Pisgah. Who did he? Joshua. Joshua. Amen. Somebody can talk. Now, Zerubbabel and Joshua are the two anointed ones of God to lead the children of Israel to preach the two anointed of God to go and they're silent as far as the preaching up until the 11th chapter of the book of Revelation. 
As far as preaching, they're leading. But as far as preaching. But now he said, but he said, these are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Whoa, wouldn't I love to be that one? Mm. Oh. Boy, I tell you, God, God, I'd love to be that. But anyway, in Revelations, I can't even get back to Revelations somewhere in this book. But anyhow, all right, but the thing about it is, but also in First King, but the thing about it, I want, I want, I've got to get to this. These two witnesses are lights. They're lights, just like. Who other, when you, when you think about the power of God, when you think about the fire of God, when you think about the people, of the men of God pulling fire out of heaven, who do you think about? Now, you think about this. These are men according to, that's able to do it. In First Kings, in First Kings, well, in chapter 18, in verse number 38, Elijah, he's up on the mountain with Baal. In 63 words after he had prayed, after he'd got a hold, Baal, he told them to dance and all of this stuff. And he said, your God's dead and all of this here. And brother, he repaired the altar and all of this. He prayed 63 words. And brother, the fire of God fell upon the altar and sopped up all the water. But it hadn't rained in three and a half years. And he had all these barrels of water and he poured them out up on Mount Carmel. Well, we got plenty of water here on Mount Carmel. Now, let me ask you something. Me and Gene's been to Mount Carmel. Now, that's a big old high mountain up there. Now, I want y'all to talk to me just a little bit. It's 15 to 8. Would you talk to me? I want you, I want you to talk to me. Where'd you get the water from? Did he? Where'd you get the water? Hadn't rained in 42 months. It's a drought. There wasn't no water nowhere. Where'd it come from? Nobody else had water nowhere. Where, how, do you, how do you know he did? How, where, where, show me where God gave it to him. Do, do where, show, show me where the water come from. Show me where the water come from. <laughs> Baal didn't have no water. The oxen didn't have no water. They didn't have no water to cook with. They didn't have no water. They didn't have no water for nothing. But Elijah had barrels of water after he repaired the altar. Where did he get it? Show me. Huh? He sweated while he's building an altar. <laughs> Elijah was a Baptist. He ain't going to sweat. <laughs> I don't know where that water come from. Uh, brother, but he had bukus of water up there on top of that mountain uh, poor, 
preacher, he poured this water all around. He drenched that altar. Do you reckon that he had a cloud come over that thing? And brother, it was just like an old time dairy barn. And he went up there and he said, soldiers. And boys, he just started milking. No, I, I, I have wondered, I have dug, I have read after all kinds of people. Mike, you got a cow barn. Tell me where that water come from. But you can't prove it. If God didn't, God didn't provide that water, brother, they didn't nobody. A devil sure didn't provide it. But go on visitation. And you let some of these smart alecks come up with that. Show me where God brought that water in. Mm. That makes you want to cut their galaxies loose. But the thing about it is, not only that, but you go over into 2 Kings. 2 Kings in chapter number 10. I want to show you something. 2 Kings chapter 2 and verse number 10. And Elisha, okay, 2 Kings chapter number 2, or chapter number 1, I mean, verse number 10. 2 Kings chapter number 1, verse number 10. And, and here, here we go, all right? And Ahazi fell, fell down through some lattice. He fell down through some lattice. All right. He, okay, he, he crippled up himself and went to bed. All right, he called on Baal. He called on the devil worshipers. All right, and he said in verse number, chapter 1 and verse number 2 of 2 Kings, he said, Ahazi fell through the lattice of the upper chamber. That day was in Samaria. He was sick and he sent his messengers to go inquire about Beelzebub. All right, he wanted the devil worshipers. He wanted the devil's crowd to come over there. And he said, uh, of Ek Ek Ekron, he said, whether I shall recover of this disease. But now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through this kind of fast and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hip, hip you a little bit if I can. All right. And he found out there's a man of God over there. And he said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Somebody told him about it, and he said, I'll tell you what, do send, send 50 men, go over and get him. So they sent 50 men over there to get Elisha, or Elijah. And boy, what did he do? He called, and the thing about it was, he went over there, and he called on God. He said, God, he said, if I really be your man, I'll tell you what I want you to do. I want you to send fire down from heaven and I want you to kill all 50 of them and I want you to kill the ones that sent Kill the crowd that brought them over here. Boom! God killed them right there. God killed all 50 of them. Boy, the word got back to the, uh, uh, to, uh, uh, the old uh, uh, Hazai uh, Hazi and he, he told him, he sent 50 more. God killed that. Hezekiah, he prayed unto God, and God, Elijah did, and God killed every one of them. 
He prayed, God killed him. You don't fool with God's man with God on his side. He said, God, if I'm your man, I want you to kill him. God killed all 50 of them. He went back up there and he said, hey, he said, Beelzebub is stronger, bigger than God, and I know it. Go get me 50 more and send them over there. God killed them. He said, whoa, boy, this old boy's got power with a God that I know nothing about. Now you talk about fires, a man sending fire down from God. I'm still in Revelations. I'm talking about power coming down to two witnesses from God on high to preach the Word of God. Joshua and Zerubbabel standing in the streets of Jerusalem and the devil, the Antichrist, and all of that crowd couldn't stop them. And they was there and they couldn't do a thing with them. And buddy, they was turning that place upside down for God. This is men, this is people that knew, I'm talking about the power that God had and could have called down from heaven upon that place. But the next time they went out, that old boy, they took him along and brother, that captain fell down on his face before him. He said, thou art a man from God. Don't kill me, please don't kill me. Please don't kill me, tell me. Tell me is, is a, 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 a Hezekiah, is it, is it, or Hezekiah, is he going to live or is he going to die? Look at the last verse in verse uh, chapter number one. Now, or cha- uh, verse number 17, or verse number 16, the last part of it. And he said, the God of Israel required, therefore thou shalt not come down off of that bed on which thou art gone up, but shalt surely die. You don't go against God and live. Let's go back to Revelation. Let's go back to Revelation. What about what am I talking about? John made an announcement about being baptized with fire in Revelation chapter 3, or uh, Matthew chapter 3 and verse number 11. Let me, let me just read that right quick. He said, now listen, they wouldn't listen to it in Revelation, the two that were preaching. And he said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. I'm talking about looking through the pipe. At Zerubbabel, that uh, Zechariah talked about looking through the pipe that they were talking. Zerubbabel, I mean, Zechariah told them of that was coming. And he said, And I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am uh, not worthy to uh, bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. What, what was God talking about? I'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Every one of you should be. What, 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 did, what did God mean in Matthew chapter 3, verse 11? You should be baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire. What did God talk about with fire? Holy Ghost and with fire. The old... No. The old sins are burnt out through the Holy Ghost of God. The pipe, when you, oh wait, when I, when I turn on the gas, on my gas logs, on my furnace, on my whatever, 
and I won't lit up on that car sitting out there. When that gas goes through that line and that spark hits it, brother, there becomes something to vaporize that thing. It has, it throws a jolt through there and there is power. Through the Holy Ghost of God, Christ said, all power is given into me in heaven and in earth, and because I go to the Father, I give you all of that what? That power. You have the power, so you have the thrust. Amen. Why don't you use it? Oh, Lord, the devil's been on my back all day today. Oh, the devil's rode me like a mule. Reason he has, you've given him a saddle to ride in. You've just complained and complained and complained and give him something to hang on to. God said, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Get rid of him. Get rid of the devil. Quit complaining and get rid of the devil. But look at the next verse. Look in Revelation chapter 11 what God said. He said here, He said, Now these two olive trees are standing before God in the earth, and if any man will hurt them. God said He's going to kill them, but look in verse number 6. Oh Lord, it's 8 o'clock. Folks, these two people are amazing. These two people are amazing. They are, they are unreal. They, they are... And everybody that I talk to thinks, well, they are Elijah. No, they're not. They are God's men doing God's work. And they're not doing one thing that you can't do. You can stand up and you can be a witness unto God in the face of adversities, a face of the devil, in the face of you can be the unique person that God knows you can be. Let's stand it. Heavenly Father, the Almighty God, as we stand before you this evening, Lord, I pray, dear Father, that you will lead us and guide us into all that you have us do. Lord, there's so much that we don't understand. And Lord, that what to do. Lord, help us rightly divide the word of truth. Lord, as Joshua stepped into the banks, or off of the banks, into Jordan. Lord, before he would go, Lord, he had the ministers. He had the leaders. He had the 12 tribes. He had them. Lord, he had the power of God. He had the anointing of God. He had the Levites. He had your men that were appointed by you under the direction of Moses. But Lord, they were appointed by you. Then carried out by Moses. Then Lord, you appointed him. Then Lord, as they marched through that wall, Lord, I, I wanted to have time 
to bring all of this out. And maybe we will by the way today. Lord, they carried a precious token with them. God help us not to forget to bring all of this out. Please, Lord. God help us understand. And God help us, Lord, God to see how important this is. God because, Lord, your word is infallible. Yes. Lord, it's whole. It's complete. And Lord, it's so precious. And Lord, that time, that time, Lord, Lord, it carries the news that will be carried as long as there is time between the angel of God declares that time will be no more. Lord, if God, what time will be. Forgive us, Father, for we face. Help us understand, Lord, what you want us to do. Then, Lord, help us close the book. In Jesus' name.